Hey guys, what's up? Aru, do we really need visions? No, let me rephrase that. Humanity doesn't need visions. They don't need it to fight treasure hoarders or hilly churls, don't need it for the Fatui, and don't need it for the Abyss or Celestia. In today's video, we're gonna discuss a theory and try to absolutely destroy the sole reason why we even play this game. Starting with Shen Yun's analysis on humans' reliance on visions, attaining the ability to manipulate elemental energy through self-discipline, basically cultivation, why visions are being granted only to humans in the first place, a revisit on vision lore from before, what it is now, and what comparisons we can make. Finally, whether or not humans would need visions, or if visions are even necessary to use elemental power. As always, timestamps down below for you guys who want to listen to a specific segment. Let's go! Starting with how this little curious theory started, Xianyan's story goes over a little interaction with a non-vision holder where she met a young farmer who was fending off some descriptively feeble bandits. And in this particular interaction, she observed the farmer's complete change in demeanor after seeing an external object that symbolizes a form of power. After noticing that Xian Yun has a vision, the farmer's tone and posture of caution from a defensive stance instantly changed to now a very confident fighting soldier with nothing more than a farmer's plow. Xian Yun then notices after the event that the farmer would only muster his courage after noticing Xian Yun's vision, or maybe even anyone with a vision. Granted, Xian Yun did help unarm one of the bandits of one of his daggers, the majority of the work was done by the farmer himself. Bear in mind, we don't really know how many bandits there were and how many knives each bandit was holding. After that seemingly intense battle between a farmer and some bandits, Xian Yun then lectures the farmer to be more confident of his own skill and that she barely lifted a finger to help him. She then makes a conjecture of the level of influence that an external object like a vision can give people that much courage, when in reality, self-courage and confidence is the only thing that is needed to face adversity. That reliance on external objects to give you courage is a huge folly in the fundamentals of self-worth and recognizing one's own power, compared to relying on your own abilities to use what you have and facing problems head-on. This can all be found in Xian Yun's vision story by the way and is where our theory of humanity not needing visions comes into play. Now it's worth noting that Xian Yun as well as other beings that are classed as quote-unquote adepti are non-humans but are able to manipulate elemental energy and that non-humans that can manipulate the elements have what's called an inner eye. This is based on the developer's notes with Xiao's and the adepti's inspiration from the Xianren or immortals which are mythical and supernatural beings with a connection to the heavenly realms in Taoism as well as using the quote of Sun Wukong stating that all who have nine orifices can achieve immortality through self-discipline. This goes deeper into the practice of cultivation to extend one's lifespan, which is a long arduous process of meditation, self-improvement, learning, and practice to reach transcendence or immortality. Harnessing qi is also an aspect of cultivation and is something that anyone can achieve if they put in the effort. There's also genres of cultivation or wuxia and xianxia, which goes even deeper into who, what, and why that person is cultivating. For the context of Genshin, living beings like the Adepti who are animals and or non-humans that can manipulate elemental energy are made with individual separate purposes in the world of Tavad compared to humans. But because the Adepti sometimes or all the time appear in human form, they then need to fit with the norm that their quote-unquote inner eye for manipulating elements should be represented externally in the form of a vision. The same can be said for other adepti like Xiao and Ganyu. Ganyu can even reach a point in her self-discipline training where visions won't be needed anymore, which goes to the level of Xianyan and the Archons who then need fake visions, becoming a more or less completely elemental being. For humans, the best example are Grandmaster Arendalin and Jiang Shui, a Grandmaster who displayed great strength and combat prowess, who probably knows how to practice self-discipline but does not have a burning wish that Celestia requires for a vision, and a vision holder who renounced his vision after doing bad things, but is still very, very powerful. Other examples 
examples of vision holders that use different means to channel elemental energy are Yao Yao and Shang Ling, who were trained in the Adepti Arts by Madame Ping. I would even argue that Shen He, who already had her vision but is still trained in the Adepti Arts, is also another good example. I know that they're much more vague compared to Ganyu, Xiao, and Qian Yun's Adepti power, as well as Shu Yu, who was already half Adepti, but I guess Hoyo just didn't want to spoil the value that humans had and their visions have to Celestia and, well, the plot. But basically, humans, animals, and all manner of living beings can have the ability to manipulate the elements, so long as they themselves practice a form of cultivation or, at least based on the devs, self-discipline. But pursuing such a high level of self-mastery and autonomy of elemental manipulation and immortality to extend your life would reach the highest form of ascension, that is, godhood, of which you would one day achieve a power to manipulate the world itself, virtually becoming a descender into that. Something that has caused more than enough change and destruction in the world for at least three times already. You can think of the Traveler as achieving the highest form of Xian as well, and regaining our power is a valid reason to be called a Descender. But why is it that only some people are given visions? What's the outlying message that humans need to understand to be better humans? And what would happen if all the humans were to practice self-discipline and cultivation? And why do humans specifically have a purpose that is higher than that of the Adepti, or maybe even the Archons? All of this isn't about how visions are gained, but rather why humans and frankly the majority, if not the entirety of the game, is centered around visions and allogenes or genshins. So why do humans get visions anyway? Funnily enough, humans were meant to serve a higher purpose than that of the Adepti. Even though humans themselves worship the Adepti as well as mythical elemental creatures as deities and gods. The name Genshin in the game, although is kind of lost in translation, means pretty much the same thing. Yuan Shen in Chinese and Genshin in Japanese both mean original gods. But in English, it's translated to allogenes, which is from Gnosticism. Gnosticism is linked to Celestia and plays a pretty big role in the story of Genshin through the Gnostic Chorus which is all common knowledge at this point for Genshin lore, at least now you know. But the ties of having visions are too linear in my opinion, and that the one end goal you would reach if you pursue it is to ascend to godhood and be part of Celestia. But we don't exactly know what that means apart from having fulfilled your duty using your gift, i.e. vision. So is ascending to godhood only exclusive to Celestia or is godhood being blocked by Celestia? Because visions also extend to Celestia's gods which allows them to receive even more abundant gifts in return after you reach your full potential theoretically to ascend to godhood. So maybe humanity's higher purpose than the Adepti and possibly even higher than the Archons is to find it within themselves, passion, ambition, deepest wishes, burning desires, to be worthy of these visions visions, and repay the gods by the end of their own journey with something more abundant, that is, the highest form of ascension. An example of such reflection of wishes is Yanfei's vision being put on an adeptal weighing scale. No amount of Mora could balance it, all except for her pretty heavy handwritten book of legal notations. This isn't the best example to gauge a vision's significance to humans as a whole, but it could show a reflection of Yanfei's vision which is equal to the passion and and wish she has for protecting the legal matters of Liwe plus a lot of Mora. So theoretically the same could be said for each unique vision's value which is a reflection of a person's wish. Vanessa's journey also highlights ascension and that at the end of her journey she gets to go to Celestia and then come back out as a hawk. So is that the highest ascension happening to Vanessa or is it an instance of being barred from godhood? Interestingly, Thaumaturges from Liyue say that visions and constellations that allogenes possess are comparable to a microcosmic orbit or a tiny cosmos. That is to say, each vision holder carries a tiny universe with them through their constellations, of which these constellations can change fates or destinies thousands of years 
years away from today. So you basically have the power to change the universe. A very small one, but it's still a universe. The Fatui states that the stars are a lie and that the sky is fake. While we also have accounts from the Nazis and Kreutz Ordo that visions are similar to quote unquote selling yourself to the fate of the world to someone named Hermamin. And to be given a vision is to lose the chance to walk the correct path. This makes visions seem more like contracts or representations of the Allogene or Genshin for you to complete or fulfill until the end of your life rather than a gift from the gods. Visions being gifts rather than contracts are more in line with what Nouvellet is doing currently. But we know that Celestia is being suspicious from the start and that visions are also called God's eyes as well. Almost like every person's wish or potential to become gods, i.e. vision, is being monitored to make sure that they use it for the same wish they had when it was given. But also maybe to keep them from becoming a being that can change the order of the world or its laws. Losing a vision would mean losing your ambition, which is highlighted in Inazuma's story while the vision hunt decree was still going on. Those that lose their vision would lose the passion for their goal, which is the wish that allowed them to be given a vision in the first place. So taking visions is comparable to taking someone's wish away, a wish that they traded for the fate of the world. The vision hunt decree was able to take 99 visions and almost 100 if not for the intervention of the traveler during 2.0. Some who lose their visions go through memory loss, loss of ambition, hallucination, and lose their general drive for their desire as well as losing their obsessions in life. It would seem like all hope is lost for anyone who loses their vision, but for some, losing or even renouncing a vision wouldn't affect them in any way and maybe even free them from the shackles of their wish. D. Luke lost his ambition after Creepus' death and had a different drive to find out about his father's death using a delusion, both of which did not affect him negatively but he did go back to using his vision later on. But based on what happened with D. Luke, it seems he didn't lose ambition but his ambition changed from being a knight of the Favonius and making his father proud to looking into his father's death and avenging him. He never lost his drive, only the direction of where it went. The same can be said for other NPCs in 2.0 story quests like Tajima, Kurosawa, and Domon who have lost and regained their visions but have pursued a different path as well as still having a semblance of elemental sensitivity and ability to use the elements. Jiang Shui is also one such example. But a better and more recent example is Tartalia, who lost his connection and control with his vision which led him to giving it to us. So it's possible that visions can only apply to the most recent wish that a person had that activated that vision. Which means it's also possible, albeit harder, to harness elemental elements without having to rely on visions. As well as getting two consecutive visions if you could end up with two consecutive wishes. But if you know how to harness elements on your own, like say the Traveler, you wouldn't need a vision or be part of Celestia's divine pyramid scheme. Visions are more like catalysts anyway, to channel elements rather than straight up bestowing of powers. Some who have lost and regained their visions don't seem affected either, as long as they're still headstrong and have enough willpower to move forward. For Ito and Kuki Shinobu, they both seem fine and more or less just annoyed that their visions were taken from them. Although Ito is an Oni and Shinobu studied as a Shrine Maiden, so they have that going for them in terms of spirit and willpower. But again, the idea that as long as you practice self-discipline and rely on your own abilities, being headstrong and having enough willpower, as mentioned by Xian Yun, still holds true. And anyone who loses their ambition can still find a different path with a similar level of desire that they once had. So elemental ability isn't locked to visions, but is locked to one's self-discipline, regardless if humans have a higher purpose or not. If animals who possess less purpose in the vet can become adepti, then humans can also possess elemental powers without relying on Celestia. Even the lowest of beings like Hilichurls can use elemental powers. The Abyss and other creatures as well can use elemental energy without visions. Another case is delusions, which are bootleg visions that theoretically, if you put enough research into it, might end up becoming a stable way of using elements. But again, why rely on external sources like delusions and visions when you can practice this yourself? Cultivation. 
So humans most certainly can achieve elemental mastery without possessing a vision or relying on a wish that Celestia likes. And even better, since you're not tied to Celestia, and your elemental mastery extends to every other ambition that you have, and not only the obsession that you have, which leads to getting a vision. But if this is true and humanity can reach elemental mastery with practice, then the next question would be why visions are given in the first place, and why make humans reliant on visions and vision holders when humanity can and likely have the best potential for not only individual strength, but also elemental energy. For that, we need to look at Celestia itself. Also, hi, if you're still watching this video, you obviously enjoy watching this video if you reach this far. So like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and uh, click on that bell if you want to watch more of my videos. Anyway, the Seven were established long ago after the Archon Wars when the Usurper, or the Primordial One, had all of its functions ruined, which seemed like a last-ditch effort to save the world from its own resentment and loathing. This could be referring to the Abyss, and this last effort could be a way to keep the world from being swallowed by that abyss. The usurper and the one who came after, whoever that is, created the Gnosis while also driving the fragments of the primordial, which could mean the four shades, to devour each other. Interestingly, Venti's tale of the primeval gods, like Purusha, Pangu, and Ymir. Three primeval gods with similar primordial creation stories being sacrificed to create the world today. The fourth shade, possibly Easteroth, we still don't know where and if they're still alive, but they likely possess the knowledge of that past. Along with that was the seven thrones of heaven, whose archons would be seated and oversee Tevat's lands. And when a person's wish is great enough, or reaches the heavens, the seven overseers would impart a shattered shard of their mastery to that person. Now this shard of mastery comes in the form of a vision, and although the archons themselves don't know who or what wish has reached the heavens, it's still their duty to give these visions to those fervent people. Because the duty of Allogenes carries over a bigger duty that Celestia has for Tevat, at least that's what's implied from what we currently know. Which is possibly how Kazuha obtained an electro vision for a brief moment in time. Even though A herself isn't responsible for who gets a vision, she still gives it as a response to Celestia's law. Today, visions are still being gifted to those with fervent wishes that are heard by Celestia. But we now have two conflicts related to that. Visions that are hydro are only given to those as a reward for their hard work instead of a wish being fulfilled. Hydro visions today come from the Hydro Sovereign, Nouvellet, as to before assumed from Fossalor, who was inside the Oratress of Fontaine. Farina is the latest example of Nouvellet bestowing a vision and a pretty unique one at that, one that allows for a manipulation of both Numa Osha. So maybe Nuvolet can customize Hydro Visions as well because he can control Numa Osha too. Another different yet interesting case is the Electro Visions which only stopped appearing for a year. This is more due to the Vision Hunt Decree being enacted a year ago but this could be because A was straying from her path to eternity and creating the Thousand-Eyed God, which is different from Makoto's way of handling Inazuma and its people, of which she also implies that Archons aren't the ones who determine if visions and wishes are granted or denied. This is solidified and further elaborated by Nouvellet's statements that Archons give visions away anonymously to anyone that only Celestia deems worthy. Regarding other dragons like a pep, I don't think they're the ones giving visions, but the elemental power I think originates from dragons still, so we need the dragons. This would also make sense why only vision holders can use waypoints and likely the statues of the seven, because all of them were possibly enacted and made at the same time period. Finally, we have masterless visions, which is an interesting way for visions to be reused, albeit very rarely. Based on the current 4.5 information we have, masterless visions seem to function similarly with new visions, but your wishes need to align with the previous holder's wish. So realistically, a carrier of a masterless vision may be able to have it for years on end without activating it simply because they don't have a burning desire or wish that Celestia deems worthy, while someone who just picks up a random masterless vision but is already in the process of becoming a worthy allogene or has a similar wish may just have that as their vision instead of one that's 
factory new. <laughs> Hopefully you get it. So you could virtually harvest all the masterless visions and then try resonating with all of them and hopefully activating one of them. But at the same time, you would need to constantly have that same wish or obsession that the previous holder once had with that vision. Because if not, you would then lose connection with that vision. Sadly, we only have Ning Wang, Mona and Kazuha as examples which are already related to the people that they received their masterless visions from. Except Ning Wang, that was just straight up luck. But it's a pretty good example of using every masterless vision and then resonating with it. Mona received hers from her master, Barbalo, while Kazuha's masterless vision was from his friend. Mona's seemed like an already active vision that functioned as a teaching aid that eventually became her own as time went by. Which is interesting because you can use someone's vision and then make it your own if you could. While Kazuha's was a brief moment of resonating with his friend's wish, that is, to brave the lightning's glow. Which could be that any powerful force must have another opposing force to stop it, or that there should be those that strive to level the power of gods. At least that's my interpretation. Now it's worth noting that resonating with a masterless vision is a very rare case, since no one knows what the masterless vision's wish could be unless properly informed or is related to it at an emotional and obsessive level. Just like Kazuha's deep relation with his friend or Mona's relation to Barbalo's ideals. The other is Ning Wang, who activated a masterless vision because she wanted to sell masterless visions as commodities. I guess that was also a rare case that she resonated with someone who also had the mind for business opportunities. Probably not for selling visions, but to make a profit of everything in the land. But again, that strategy to gain elemental mastery is still tied to Celestia's contract with gifts and ascension. But Ning Wang's idea is honestly one of the best that you could do if you were looking for a vision right away. With all that said, we can go back to Xian Yun's words of wisdom and some quite old dev notes about Xiao from the first segment. Anyone and anything can obtain the ability to manipulate the elements, as long as they put in time, effort, practice, and self-discipline. The same way cultivation, or more specifically, achieving Xian Ren, or immortality, is. All who have nine orifices can achieve immortality through self-discipline. Humans, animals, and any other non-human with nine orifices can be able to manipulate elemental energy without having to stick with a single burning desire or wish that Celestia allows for a vision, without being part of Celestia's grand plan for ascension and also being able to use your mastery without relying on a shard of mastery. A god's eye that ties your obsessive wish for the fate of the world to someone named Hermamine. So now let me ask you. Would you be so reliant on your single wish or obsessive desire to submit yourself to the fate of the world and believe in the fabricated stars in the sky? Or are you going to pursue the art of self-discipline and achieve your own form of Xianren, becoming immortal and to be a master of the elements without answering to any other master than yourself? Or is that too high a price for the ability to change the world without selling your soul? Are visions a strategy to keep humanity from achieving the highest form of ascension? Or does all of humanity possess the latent power of becoming a descender? I think we already knew the answer from the start and was already in the name of the game, Genshin Impact. That is, the descent of original gods, humans. So there we go, revisiting my old video with the new 4.5 lore information and making a new theory from it. Now, if you managed to make it all the way to this video, thank you. <laughs> You're an absolute chad if you watched all the way here. Comment below, what do you guys think of the video? Is it more of the same thing about vision lore and theory? Or is there anything new on visions and how they work? Visions have always been part of the game and vision holders as well as the lore behind it have all been so suspicious since 1.0. So making a video on this every now and then for the channel is always a blast to put together. Albeit a very long video, I have no idea how long this video is by the way. But anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like on if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my roundings and stay mad theorists. Bye!